All right. I'm recording. All right, let's start over. We're starting over. Uh, what'd you say? The, the, things that, the tapper? The, the, the tapper? tapper. The, tapper. Oh, the film tapper. Or take two. The film tapper. Oh, yeah, the Action. little thing. That, yeah, okay. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, how are y'all today? <laughs> yeah. All right, um, we're filming now, right? <laughs> 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 All right. So today, we're really excited about this one. Butch and I were kind of talking about what could be a practical thing for us to do on our uh, Country Squire Tobacconist YouTube channel. Something that, um, you know, would be something that people could kind of refer back to if you needed some help. And today we thought we'd talk a little bit about how to load and uh, pack and light your pipe. So it, this might be kind of a helpful thing for newer pipe smokers or maybe folks that have smoked for a while but don't really understand Kind of how to keep it lit or maybe struggling a little bit with uh with you know keeping their pipe lit and that kind of thing so um so we thought we'd talk about that so um and we've got yes we've got butch here obviously um and we've got caleb here as well um and we've got other people in the room too but they don't want to be on camera so um so we we won't we won't refer or discuss them in any way shape or form even if they are uh even if gullible's written on the ceiling. So, yeah. Um, still nothing. Still nothing. <laughs> nothing. No, nothing. I don't, where is it? So, today we wanted right. to talk about... Do you know about... gullible's not a word? It's not an actual word? It's not on the ceiling either. I checked. Okay. Sorry. So, anyway, today we're going to talk about tamping, uh, packing, and lighting your pipe. And I've got a couple different kinds we're going to go over today. Uh, we're going to do a flake tobacco in a minute. I've got a can of uh, cap stand here. Um, which is, uh, this is the yellow label cap stand, really nice Virginia. Um, and uh, I actually have never tried this tobacco, which is a heresy. Really? I've never tried this tobacco, so I'm actually going to light this up uh, right here for the first time. Um, the cap stand is great. I hear it's a lot like Orlick or the uh, Bowen uh, tobacco number 14, which I'm a big fan of. Um, so anyway, we're going to try that in a minute. Um, but first, I thought we'd do a loose leaf tobacco. This is called Senior Chief, and we. Uh, are developing this for a customer of ours that lives in Louisiana. Uh, his name's Pappy Joe on Twitter, if you want to find him. Uh, Pappy Joe found us through our podcast that we also do uh, on iTunes. You can find us at Country Squire Radio. But um, anyway, he wanted something with a good bit of Latakia in it, but also elements of maybe a little aromatic tobacco. And so uh, we kind of monkeyed with it a little bit and got, got a pretty good combination. So I'm going to light this up first. Um, and I'm going to be smoking it in my Savinelli Tundra, um, which is, and this is actually a shape they only make in the Tundra edition. It's kind of a paneled pipe. I think it's a 699? Yeah, 699 shape. Very you good. kind of see it's got a real nice panel on it. And um, beautiful. Pretty pipe. So this pipe retails uh, for about 180, 190, something like that. <clears throat> but anyway. Can they buy it here? Uh, they can. They can buy it here. Online? Uh, not online. But you can call me. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can mail it. Yeah. Okay. I'll mail the pipe. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, beautiful pipe. But what we're going to do first is um, is load our pipe. Now, what I do, and a lot of folks, you know, sorry, as as we have kind of our YouTube internet community, um, you've got purists out there that are going to tell you different ways to pack and load your pipe. Um, for me, I just kind of cram my pipe full of tobacco <laughs> and then and then light it but what I do and, and it's funny because I'm at you know as as the guy on this side of the counter I'm supposed to have all the correct answers but um, it, it really does help me just to kind of think of it simply and, and so the idea when you're loading your pipe is you want you want it to be loose on the bottom but firmer as you go up the side of the bowl and I've always told people that I think it's really helpful the idea is to, when you when you suck on your pipe uh, as you're about to light it, you want to have, you know, good airflow going through it, but feel some resistance. So not quite the thickness of maybe a milkshake or something, but um, some type of resistance where you can kind of feel that there's something in the bowl. Um, so what I do is I just kind of gravity fill the first few pinches of tobacco. I'll take some tobacco and just kind of drop it in like this. Uh, obviously, I'm making a mess. Um, but I just drop it in real loose at the bottom. And then as I go up the bowl, I'll pack it tighter and tighter. Really, you know, I prefer to have tobacco uh, 
when it's towards the top of the bowl to be really, really firm. I, that just seems to help me. And But because I've just kind of gravity filled the tobacco at the bottom, it still has a really good airflow in a way to get through to the to the draft hole so you can get a good um, unobstructed uh, draw on your pipe. So what I'll do is I'll pack it pretty tight and uh, and then I'll pull on it and see, see how I pull. Make sure I get good airflow, but still I want to feel that sense of resistance. So matter of fact, I'll let uh, Caleb here, why don't you take your pinky, Caleb, and just kind of press in on that. How, is there a way you would describe that? It's pretty packed. I mean, it's pretty. It feels it's, pretty tight. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, it's not. You know, it's definitely not loose. I mean, it's a it's a tight pack. So, and I just to me that that helps keep it lit easier. Now, this thing right here, your tamper. Um, obviously, if you've been a pipe smoker for a long time, you know exactly what this is. But you know, sitting on this side of the counter, people come in all the time and they say, you know, I'm having trouble keeping your pipe lit. I'm keeping my pipe lit, and the first thing I t ask them is, do you tamp? And a lot of people, you know, will grab this and say, oh yeah, you know, when I'm loading the bowl, I do like this, I tamp my pipe. But the idea is, and what where a lot of people just don't really understand as they go along, is this little dude right here is the key to keeping your pipe lit. Um, and it also helps with tongue bite if you regularly tamp your pipe, because the more you are able to keep your pipe lit, the less tongue bite you're going to have. Where the hardest part on your tongue is where you actually have to relight the pipe over and over and over to keep it lit. So this is the key. I always tell people, you treat your pipe like a little campfire or like your fireplace. It's one of those things if you've been camping, like you don't just light your fire and then it goes all night. You have to sit there and tend to it and stoke it up and kind of poke and prod at it. Your fireplace is the same way. You know, you've got to kind of adjust the logs around to, to keep it lit, make sure there's airflow and get the ashes out of the way and all that. Your pipe is the same way. So you treat this like your little campfire that you kind of have to nurture to keep it going. Uh, what's our friend in um, Michigan? He says, father the flame. Uh, fathering the flame is, is kind of that, that concept, which is really nice. So a t-shirt with that. Um, you want a t-shirt with that? I think you can buy a t-shirt with that. Yeah, it's a movie coming it's out. A, it's, it's a, a movie. movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're crowdfunding it. Yeah, it, it's, we're, it's, it's exciting. But fathering that flame, taking care of it, tending to it, um, and, and, and your tamp is really a key element to that. So I'm going to light this up and I'll show you kind of how I do it. Um, what you'll see me do is light this, get a really good burn on the top right there with really deep puffs. I want to pull that flame deep into it. Um, and then once I get a lot of billowing smoke going, uh, lots and lots of billowing you know, clouds of smoke, then I'll take my tamp and gently press down here. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, absolutely. Do you do a charring light? That's a good question. Some people do a charring light. I do. And Caleb does a charring light. And uh, it's a char light or a false light. And the idea there is you actually kind of put a little toast on the top of your uh, tobacco leaves, have them go ahead and curl up, and then just throw that match away, tamp it down, and then relight your pipe again. I, I typically don't do that just because I can kind of get it lit on the first one, but if I sense that the flame is not going to fully take on that first light, then I'll just throw that match away, kind of tamp it down to repack it a little bit, and then and then go with it. So a char light or a false light might really help you, so that's that's an option for you too. So anyway, this is how I do it. And as you're doing it, the reason I ask is because a lot of people say you have to do it. Right. And I like the fact that you do what is right for you. You do what you want to do. Yeah. That's why, as a tobacconist, I tell people all the time, find out what works for you and keep doing it. And keep doing it. So I kind of let the flame go up the side of the match to get a wider uh, wider burn on it. That's good information, actually. It's really good. And see, this one... I actually didn't get lit very well, so I am going to do a false light. <laughs> so it's just whatever for each time. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. This tobacco has some ready rub Virginia in it, and so because the leaves are a little chunkier, um, it might take you a little longer to get it lit. I find that it's easier, um, at least like throughout the entire smoke, mm -hmm. if I do the false light at first, it's easier to keep it lit throughout the entire smoke. Yeah. Yeah, um, just because you get the flame more so deep in there. Yeah, it's yep. a lot easier to do that. So like, not just to get the pipe initially lit, 
but throughout the entire smoke, it kind of helps with keeping that the flame deeper in the bowl. So you'll notice I haven't tamped yet. Um, I kind of like to get a lot of real deep puffs first. Lots of billowing smoke, and now I'll tamp while I'm puffing. And what does that do? Does that just compact the tobacco so it doesn't go everywhere? That's right. What's okay. your, what you're doing when you light a? Um, if you're from the south, we have a lot of pine trees in the south. And if you've ever lit, if you've ever lit pine straw on fire, you'll notice that it curls up as it burns. But we ha we don't smoke it in our pipes. But that we know of. <laughs> pipe, pipe tobacco is the same way. So as you light your pipe tobacco, those top leaves are going to kind of curl up as they burn. Um, and so the idea is you're forcing it back down into the, into the bowl of, of the pipe. I think it also has a lot to do with like the tobacco burning evenly. Yeah, it's got to be an even pack. Yeah. And that, that makes sense um, you know, from a few standpoints. The, the, real, the real trick, again, is to use your tamp. Uh, and you know, of course, we've just got a simple pipe nailed here. Uh, Butch is actually using his uh, three-way check tool right here, which uh, is probably the most common one we sell. But um, you know, if you use your tamp regularly, the idea is you, you know, if you sense that your flame is starting to dwindle a little bit, then come back to your tamp and just while you're puffing it kind of fast, then you can you can tamp it down. So that way, the tobacco that isn't lit yet can get lit from the tobacco that is lit. That's right. That's forming a whatever down in the almost the bowl. like a like a little pool of uh, yeah lava or something you know? ember mm -hmm. yeah very good so that's the idea and if you do it right really again you know if you if you can keep your pipe lit through tamping it you're gonna be helped with your tongue bite because the less you have to relight your pipe the less tongue bite you'll get your tongue is so sensitive when you're sitting there trying to light your pipe that's the hardest part that is really good information so that's a senior chief that we're developing for our friend Pappy Joe in Louisiana. And so Real, that's a that's a loose cut. That's a loose cut tobacco. Okay. That's right. It's kind of a chunky tobacco, so you it might, have the it's got that rub. ready rubbed uh, kind of chunky, flaky in it. So um, let's do. Can we do a uh, the next video on flake? That's a great idea because this one's gone kind of long. So well, but it's been very informative. It's been informative. Um, very good. You did a great job. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> You're a good guy. You're a good guy. All right, bless, so, bless your heart. Right, bless what your heart. What a great personality. Right. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so next week when we come back, we'll do capstan. Sorry. Uh, and we will uh, take this. I'll kind of show you how you can take a flake tobacco. There's a couple ways you can do it, uh, but we'll kind of look at uh, flake tobacco, what the best way is to kind of work through that. It can be a little trickier to get it, get it lit. But once you get it lit, it stays lit a really long time. So um, I look forward to that. I'm, I can't wait to try this stuff. Very good. Yep. So we're going to say goodbye to this one, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, y'all.